Hey everyone, welcome back for day two of this Adobe Live. I'm your host, Fabiola Lara. We're back with graphic designer and illustrator, Danny Vo. Are you ready for day two, Danny? Yes, happy to be here again and take it to the finish line. Yes, now before we get started, if you missed the previous stream, you can always view the replay on Behance or YouTube. Plus, check out photographer Winnie Lau as she composites product photography in Lightroom Classic and Photoshop. Finally, don't miss the Illustrator Creative Challenges with Clady from Print My Soul every weekday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific right before the stream. So tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt each day. Now, if you're joining us from YouTube, I recommend you jump over to Behance. Just go to behance.net slash Adobe Live. This way you can ask any questions in the chat and be a part of our amazing creative community here. Lastly, remember you can catch the replays for all of our Adobe live streams, even when we're offline. So go ahead and bookmark this page so you can come back to it whenever you need a little refresh. Now let's check out who we have here in the chat, Danny. We have Hamza, Arshad, Voodoo Val, Red Rose, Blenda, Arshad again. Thank you guys for being here, for joining us for this stream. All right, Danny, I'm going to hand it over to you. So feel free to reintroduce yourself for all of the newbies who weren't here yesterday. And then tell us what we're going to get into for day two. Hey, hello, everyone. I'm happy to be here again. Um, my name is Danny Vo. I'm, I'm a designer from Montreal. Um, I just moved to New York a couple months ago. Um, I love this city. It's inspired me so much. Um, if you go on my website, here's um, the work that I do. You can check it out for yourself. But um, I like to do a lot of things, food photography, packaging, um, art direction, branding. Um, I like to be 360 because I think um, being multidisciplinary um, could inspire other designer. And, you know, if you want to be a leader, you need to know a lot of things. Um, so I just I think for five, 10 years from now, I always going to be a student. Um, there's always something out there to learn. Yes, uh, your portfolio is amazing. So be sure to check it out, you guys. Mm -hmm. He has so much cool work covering everything. Now, Danny, what are we working on for day two here? So I'm just going to do a recap what we did yesterday. Um, so we did a packaging for Swiss Mao. It's a vegan cake pop um, dessert. And we did went through the project outline, what this project is about. Um, it's registered farming. They take ingredients uh, from this farm and make this a uh, healthy dessert for everyone. And uh, we went through top 10 questions applying speed dating. Um, you can go back to yesterday and go through it to understand what each of these questions is about. Um, and then we went to target demographic, um, brand personality, um, some short strategy. And the, we did look at the uh, desert competitors. What are we comparing with? Um, and then we went through the mood board. So, yes. so this is the mood board for the brand that we're working on on the stream today. And yesterday you got through so much. So give us a little recap of where we're at and then what we're going to be doing. Yeah. So yesterday uh, we started with a few logo exploration. Uh, we look at colors. We look at uh, illustration, test a few out. And we land into uh, this iconic design that you have this um, cake. In the middle, it's very cute. It has its own personality. Um, it's obvious, like it's plant based with this uh, green color um, that go across on other flavor. So for today, we're gonna finish up for other flavor, and then after that, we're gonna look at the shelf set if it work in the shelf set or not. And after that, we're gonna design the horn packaging, go for the mock-up, and do some social media poster, etc. 
So, oh my gosh, there's so much to cover today. Mm -hmm. And I am so excited because this brand is so cute and delicious and vegan friendly. And I just can't wait to see how you develop it further today. I see we have four colors now. Yesterday, I think we ended with two. So we have a little update there. Um, maybe you could show us, just in case for those who missed it yesterday, how you developed the other colors using um, that cool tool that you showed us, and yes. then we can just get right into it. Awesome. Um, so let's pop in the uh, product photography. It's going to determine which color we're going to go for yes. um, the pack. I love the, I love the little icon cake balls. Um, they are so cute. And I now I'm like, does this exist? Like I need it. I know because I'm I'm vegan, so I'm like I'm ready to buy oh, this. Are. I'm your target demo, yes, for sure. So here we have a uh, sweet honey banana, and over here we have uh, let me look at it. Blue, sweet, sweet sour, sour blueberry. Um, so each of it have its own personality. Um, triple trouble chocolate is a naughty one, so it's. I have it a little wink a little bit. So sweet honey banana is gonna be a cute one. I think uh, sweet sour blueberry, um, it's gonna be a sour personality one, um, but they all gonna be really cute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I have these colors over here already uh, placed out, but let's play with the last one, uh, the sweet sour blueberry. So uh, yesterday I select the whole thing just like a shortcut, you know? And then we click through this color wheel over here. And as I said yesterday, there's many ways to do this. Either you keep uh, this all together and just rotate the cursor. Mm. And look how fun it is. But in this case, um, it doesn't work because I don't want to change the whole colors. I want to keep it green because um, it's a consistent color of the brand. So, um, Technique number two is you unclick this hook button and you can move each of these colors wherever you want. Perfect. Oh, Very that's so nice. satisfying to be able to just like quickly select it mm -hmm. as opposed to doing it manually every single time trying to guess what's working, what's not working. This is such a quick way to understand how the colors are working with each other. And yes it's so exciting too i feel like the whole time you're doing it you're just like yeah yeah getting closer getting closer i know it could get pretty addicting to you know oh my god these colors yeah you could <laughs> uh, change it for forever i know um and there's another way to do this is you click on advanced option that's where i'm gonna hit uh show up this window where it's gonna show is your current color and how which color is gonna switch to so let's say um i click on the blue Click on this color over here, and you can manually uh, go over here and edit the colors. Is you have a lot more control this way uh, when you colorize it. Because the other one, you kind of eyeball it a little bit. So this way, um, it's gonna be a little easier for you, um, in my advice. So right. since it's with our blue, uh, blueberry, so obviously uh, we're gonna have some uh, purple and blue. Yes, or, purple and blue. Such a good combo. That was my favorite colors growing up. Yes. Purple and blue. Ooh, it's going to look so cute because the little cake pop also is purple and blue. I'm, mm -hmm. so, I'm so ready for it. Um, yeah. For anyone wondering in the chat what this feature is called, this is the recolor artwork tool within Adobe Illustrator. We're going to be working in Adobe Illustrator today while Danny creates his amazing packaging design. So that's just a little reminder for anyone who maybe missed it earlier mm -hmm. Ooh, we're getting close we're getting, getting close, close here look how fast it is it's so fast i said i see even the the um color underneath the logo change too yes so it's all happening at once Ooh, this is perfect i'm getting Very. hungry i'm starting yes. the stream hungry okay and then a little detail here in there and just Pick up the colors and then you're done. Perfect. Uh, this looks amazing. This one, this one. And right now, since we have the color here, um, now we can have fun and draw their face. Um, yes. 
What are you thinking for the faces? Hmm, sweet honey banana. I'm gonna give her big lips. Oh yes, <laughs> juicy, right? Yeah. Sweet honey is like sweet honey. She's cheeky. She's ready. She's flirty. Exactly. Um, this is a little reminder for everyone in the chat again. If you have questions for Danny, drop them in the chat. Don't be shy. We're here to answer your questions while he creates this amazing packaging design. So excited to see where we go with this, especially this cute little face. Ooh, what's going on, um, Danny? What are, what are we trying to do here? Sometimes these illustrators show up like uh, when you click on it, there is no... Oh, there is here. I don't know what happened here. Sometimes oh. it happens when you zoom sometimes in Sometimes it happens. Exactly, yes. yes. There we go. And you're so okay. proficient with that pen tool. You just drew that with the pen tool, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, but I say yesterday, practice drawing helps a lot for um, this kind of work because you can't just freehand doing it. Yes. She has like a sassy pout going on. It does. I love it. Okay, so while you're working there, I wanted to ask you some questions about your career for anyone who is interested in getting into graphic design and also packaging design. Um, of course, if you do anything really crazy, you have to stop us. Let me know. But in the meantime, um, I wanted to ask your advice for anyone who is looking to get started in graphic design. Maybe they didn't go to school, so they don't have like a clear outline of how to go about it. Do you have any advice for somebody to, to get started professionally in graphic design? Um, I would say if you look out there, you have a friend who is a graphic designer or you can reach out to someone you got inspired, like don't be shy and they can talk, uh, go through it. And then they say what their um, designer life is. That if you see it's going to fit in your lifestyle or not. And um, there's a lot of like short graphic design school out there you can take. It's only like five to six months and it's totally worth it. Um, even if for yourself to have a better vision in art, um, you, def you definitely can go through that. Um, and also there is design events where you can actually meet a lot of like uh, studio owner and literally like they show up like design over there as well. So you can really get inspired. Yes, that is really good advice. You have to kind of get in there, contact, like build out your network. If you have one person in design, uh -huh. lean in, lean towards them, get their advice and just kind of immerse yourself in design and see if what it's really what you want to do. Um, do you have any advice for someone trying to get their first client? So I would say it's a lot about a connection and what you put in your Instagram, on your website. So work really hard in your case study because um, like the art direction, because the presentation is extremely important because uh, let's say your project is a 10 and the presentation could bring it up to a 20. No, I'm serious. Right. A presentation costs a lot. So um, it does cost, you know, sometimes it does cost money taking this photo, but it's really worth it because uh, when, let's say the die line look at it and they saw it's legit, they are gonna put on their website um, and promote you. So that's where you're gonna get started. People get to know you. That's so uh, true. Sometimes the presentation of the work can be just, it's like just as important as the actual work itself, like how you show your process so that people know why they should hire you. Mm -hmm. That is really, really important. I'm so glad you brought that up because you have a really excellent website and Behance. If you guys uh, haven't checked it out, be sure to go check it out because you present your work so thoroughly. You have like every explanation, you have different uh, ways you present the logo and then the actual, let's say, product in some cases. So I feel like you definitely practice what you preach. And that is really good advice for any newcomers mm -hmm. to graphic design. Um, I was wondering, oh, this is turning out so cute, by the way. I'm like looking at her little face. You're going to redo the the upper lip. It was yes. too sassy for you. I I, <laughs> I want her to smile a little bit because oh, she earlier, looked a little serious. She looked a little creepy. <laughs> yeah, she was looking like uh like yeah, she was like tough girl. Tough girl um, yeah. Okay, okay. So we're gonna make a friendlier smile. But I was looking through your portfolio and I realized that um you created such wonderful brand identity for um Super Bloom, the skincare 
company that is a part of Grove Collective. Can you tell me more about that project? I feel like it looks amazing. All of the different assets. You made so much cool stuff there. What was your favorite part? So that project、um, is another vegan skincare. So again, it's better for you and better for the planet.、Um, and you know, it's a really fun project. How you think like how they really take this natural flower out to the wild, and with science they infuse into your skin and make your skin better. So let's say、um, cactus flower. Is against the sun, so they take the power from the flower, extract it, and put it, make it as a product. So it's gonna give your skin a protection against the sun. So it's really fascinating the way they do it. So、um, as you think of it,、uh, skin product is very transformative. It's kind of magical. So I was using that、um, watercolor. Uh, texture over there. It's feel really magical. It's transformative. It's in the move.、Um, it's work really well with the brand.、Uh, and then from the inside, you have that gradient in there, really showing the transformative,、uh, the magical of、uh, this flower that come from. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous design work, and I feel like you guys have to go check it out、um, because there are so many cool elements to it and colors, and you're just really playing with all these textures. So. That is an amazing project, and I'm honored to get to chat with you about it and watch you create this little face here for this girl. You gave her some、um, Instagram eyebrows. She has like she very does. <laughs> um, tell me what what decisions you're making here on this little face. At the same time, like you know, like this. I just want to make it a little more natural as well because I don't want it to be too attached to. Man or woman, it could be either、mm. way. Because today the world is so acceptance, so you know, just there's there's no、um, you know concrete way. So it could be very fluid. So I want like everyone to feel、uh, approachable when they buy this product. Just you know,、yes. just stay in the trend a little bit. Yes, I feel like you really have to keep those things in mind when you're designing now, right?、Mm-hmm. Like you don't want unless it's purposeful. For、yes. whatever reason, but you always want to be very inclusive and make sure nowadays that your、um, design is for everyone. And I think I love that you're thinking about that and not making it, you know, too much in either direction, too feminine or too masculine. I think、yeah. that's a that's a hard、um, line to balance sometimes. It is.、Um, I think you just need to think about because, like, if you think about this brand. Um, they really want to encourage people to join this evolution of changing、uh, the planet. Because when the more you、uh, purchase this product, it's like you helping the planet a little bit because it's re- regenerative farming. So it's, they just really want everyone to able to join and become this community all together to save the earth. Yes, you got to infuse the brand mission into every part of this process.、Mm-hmm. Um, while you're creating these little characters,、um, what do you think makes an illustration more friendly or more serious? You know, because I think we as humans we know like in、yeah. our heads, but sometimes when you go to draw it, you you kind of forget and you have to reanalyze. How do I make it more friendly? How do I make it more serious? What things do you look for? Um, when things are more friendly, it's always round. So even in typography, it's rounded typography is more approachable.、Um, so a lot of this, you need to look at the curve,、um, some round, and you know this. You want to make it more stylized. You don't want to make make it too realistic because the more realistic it is. It's not as approachable. It's gonna look too serious. So、oh. you know, don't be afraid to like, oh, does the nose look right or does the face look right? Don't worry about it. That's why people. That's what makes it stylized when it's a little off. Yes, that is so true. Yeah, because I think like it gives it more of like a cartoon feeling, which feels more childish, more playful, and more、yeah. relaxed. And、mm-hmm. I think you're totally right. And You know, I hadn't even thought about how it definitely can affect the type choices that you're making too, right? Because you want、yes. everything to have the same energy, the same vibe. Oh my gosh, the blueberry one is so funny. The the little <laughs> dots look like hair, like he has curly hair. Or something. Exactly,、It's、that's why it's so, so fun. <laughs> um, so the rest, um, three of them lined together. It's look kind of fun. Um. 
Yes. This one. I love how she looked kind of like a duck. <laughs> so yes. I say here we are. Um, we can have a look at the shelf set right now because I think it's really important before you go through the next step to test if your design work or not on the shelf set because otherwise you create the home pack and you find out oh it's not working. Um, you know. Oh, okay. You know okay. one that's kind of surprise the end. Okay. So for anyone who um, is just tuning in today, didn't catch yesterday, Danny always designs directly on the mock-up. So that's what you're seeing happening here when he's dragging it. It's like the full mock-up, you know, is rendering because that way he can design specifically for that package, which you're now going to test here in the shelf set. I'm yes. very excited for this. I think it's going to look like exactly what you want, like completely different, but still in line let's see that's my prediction yes um, so cute so here if you put one in the middle over here it's definitely stand out on the shelf set because no one really doing this style of illustration and you know we have our own perspective how to uh, make the photog food photography look interesting because everyone yeah. else just have as it is, and we really reinforce the personality into the product and make it fun and approachable. Um, and see from far, if you need to zoom out to see if your logo working or not. Like right now, it does work, but it's good to zoom out sometimes. You realize, oh, my logo is too small. You have to went back and scale it up. So this is a good Got eyes it. exercise to see if it's working or not. Um, and obviously, you can tell that it's uh, plant-based because the green is just you can see it right away. Yes. Oh, it looks so different from everything mm -hmm. on the shelves, but still fits into the, the category. And I love, I know that we already love the illustrations on the face. We've mm -hmm. all agree on that. But I also think that because it has eyes, it like makes you look at it, right? Compared to yeah. everything else on the shelf. Because we all like always are looking for eyes. I mm -hmm. feel like it calls your name. It's like, look, it's like staring at me from the shelf. Yes, you you're absolutely right. It's like engaging with you, and you look at the home set. You're like, oh my god, I want more, I want to buy the home set for myself yes. because it looks so cute together. Yes, or at least I'm gonna pick it up, right? I'm like, oh, what is this? You know, exactly. because I see the little eyeballs staring at me. Mm -hmm. okay. So. You know, like when, let's say you, this is not the only design that you're going to do, you do 10 other options. And that's where you're going to test which option really stand out, which option really work. And you really narrow down three to four options to present the client. Perfect. I love this. So what are we um, doing next here? I see you're ready to go to the next step. What's going on? So right here, now we know that it's working now. Let's say the client pick this option. Now we can start building the home pack. Um, so now we're doing the top of the packaging. So this is a conversation that you may have to ask the client because the shopping experience on this is in refrigerator. So sometime at the shop, um, the product stand like this, and sometimes there's like big refrigerator that you look yeah. from the top. So you that you really need to find out because if it's shop from the top then you may need to um, put the flavor on the top and then have some repeat the, the food photography on the top as well so that people can pick it up quickly which flavor are you are they buying and which brand yes that is such a good point how however it's displayed is going to totally impact the design do you ever just repeat it on the top like all of the same information that's on the front, also on the top, or do you usually do one or the other? Um, you just like minimizing either you do Swiss smile, cake pop and girly rose lavender is enough so that people just know where they pick and then they can rotate the packaging after to know more information. Got um, it. Okay. Yeah. But in this case, I want to make it a little bit different. Let's say they only shop like this. So I don't need to repeat um, this food photography at the top because I don't want it to be too repetitive. And I really want to make um, this clear that this is like supporting the planet. So I do have an illustration here already done. Um, that we're going to put like on the top earth. over here. Exactly. So, you know, you look at it without knowing anything of this, any background about this product, you do have a sense of it's supporting the earth. And it's like spark up your curiosity and then look 
look around the pack and it's going to have more information and go on their website. So this is like a um, strategic part of uh, design. Yes, just like a subtle little hint. Right, mm-hmm. that this ice cream, this ice cream cake pop is earth friendly, you know. And I feel like you're totally right. These little icons are all giving the consumer a clue of what they could be purchasing, and you basically have to hit them with those clues very quickly. And this is one way to do it, right? Without saying earth friendly, cake regenerative farm, you know, so much information. Exactly. This is one icon to represent everything. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh, that fits perfectly. I know, and um, so cool. Let's see, you're getting it all. I'm getting trying it to all figure out there. the size. Right. When when you're working um, with packaging like this, do you usually, in your experience, print it out, or how do you test if it's working the scale of all these items? Um, because sometimes when you're working digitally, it's hard to understand the scale. <clears throat> Yes. So it's really important when you design this uh, on your screen, design uh, the actual scale of the product so that you know, because usually the smallest font is six to seven. You can go a little, you cannot go smaller than that. So when it's like the actual um, size here, you know it's like readable or not. But if you want to make sure, print it out at the actual size. And, yes. you know, just kind of testing it as well. And, you know, you can look at it from far, like stick on the wall and step back and see how it looks. Um, it's definitely help a lot. Um, yes, it's so hard. Sometimes on the screen, you're like, yeah, that's totally the perfect size. And you print it out and maybe it's huge. It's so big. Yes. <laughs> and you didn't even know because on your screen, you zoom it down and it looks okay. And I think <laughs> this is like common uh, little tips um, when you're working with print design and packaging design to make sure mm-hmm. you double check as uh, it's easy to be, get confused or um, distracted by the digital sizes of everything. So here we have a tagline, saving the planet one bite at a time. I so, love that. Yes. And we're going to put here on the top and those people get it like, oh, apparently I'm eating this delicious product and I'm saving the planet. Oh, wow. It's how convenient, how easy it is. It's so easy to save the planet. Just yes. eat these <laughs> cake pops. <laughs> yes, I can be a part of this so easily and everyone yeah. is willing to buy it, you know. I love that. Oh, and yes, fun. which what Sweet Sands on Air Media. Okay, lovely. Oh, I think I got it wrong. It should Oops. be panel. Oops. Sorry. Oops. They look the same. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I feel like everyone always wants to know what uh, fonts everybody's using. So whenever there's a new font, just tell us because people love finding out about new fonts because there's so many options out there, endless options. Um, And this one does look really cool, like modern, still very legible. Mm -hmm. It's a good choice. The fact that it's uh, stressed out a lot, um, it's give that really modern look. Yeah. And then I really want to repeat the uh, flavor uh, name oh, yes, at the bottom. Yes. Just in so, case someone's shopping from the top on one of those deep freezers. Right. Just in case, you know, um, if we don't repeat the food package, at least something. Because sometimes totally. they, they sell in the little depanner and, you know, they have that fridge that you look from the top. So I just want to make sure that is um, practical. Yes, because even though your clients, let's say Sweet Smile, their direction is to only display it from the front, maybe there is some supermarket that doesn't pay attention and they decide to display it a different way. Mm -hmm. This way, you're kind of foolproofing the design to work no matter what the experience is, because you can't always control every in-store experience, as try as you might. Yeah, because sometimes the client does... give the uh, uh the place instruct them how to display the product sometimes they listen sometimes they don't sometimes so they i don't. just want to yeah. be safe <laughs> totally totally so okay wow this is looking good. so good yeah girl girly rose lavender i love rose flavored things some depending on the on the place but most most places these days have a good handle of rose and it it's always so fun these like exotic flavors yes i did try our 
rose flavor one, I thought I was eating perfume. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's the opposite. When they don't do it right, it can be a little overpowering. Yes, it's good, yeah. I totally get what you mean. Why don't you guys in the chat, let me know what your favorite um, fruit flavor for one of these cake box pops would be. We have four, right? Yeah, we have, have girly four. rose, lavender. We Here's... have so you can. You can drop a rose for that one, rose emoji, a mm -hmm. chocolate emoji for the chocolate one, a banana emoji, or a blueberry emoji for the blueberry one. I'm curious. I think I would prefer girly rose lavender. Exactly. You got it so right. I was about to draw that next step. Yes. <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> yes. Uh, I feel like girly rose lavender would totally be my flavor. I'm going mm -hmm. to drop a rose in the chat so they know. Knows. So here we are, we have the top view of the product and it's <gasps> not repetitive. It's kind of fun to look at the top too. Um, so we can go to the next step and design the horn pack and see how it look. Yes. Oh my gosh. It looks amazing. I really like that you created the flavor of the um, top to be a little bigger. I feel like that was really cool. My eye knows exactly what that flavor mm -hmm. is. What made you decide that the that the um, flavor should be bigger size than saving the planet one bite at a time, because that's um, a purposeful decision there. Yeah, because the <clears throat> on the hierarchy, the flavor is more important than the tagline. So you want to look at that first uh, before you look at the the. Uh, the tagline. You look at it after, but it's still there. You know, it's not hidden. Um, it's because you don't want the information to like fight with each other. So just to help people to navigate. So when the type is too much the same size, people don't know what to read first. So it's literally help people what to read first, what to read second, so people can read it fast. Here you have sweet smile, cake pop underneath, and you could read girly rose lavender. And in the side you see, oh, it's vegan, oh, it's planet friendly. Anyway. Perfect. Yes. I feel like you're so naturally making those decisions. And I'm like, wait, tell me everything, because sometimes it's hard <laughs> to know, like maybe what's just at the top should always be first. Right. Sometimes yeah. you that that's what you might naturally want to do. But you're making a really good point here that the most important thing is the flavor. Well, the brand, then okay. the flavor, and then the tagline. So that's really cool that you're thinking about how the eye is moving throughout the design. Yeah. Okay. And, so and, okay. What, what's going on here, Danny? What, what are we trying to do? So here we have the pack path because obviously we're going to have some legal nutrition fact and ingredient and etc. Um, this section is not too important. Um, sometimes me... If you lucky as me, I have a production guy who taking care of this part because it could get very, very technical because they have some rule, you can do that or you have to put it a certain uh, type size. And I think he said at some point, some of the information has to be have with the font as well. Um, so it all be always to like double check um, on the information before you deliver to your client. Um, you can hire a freelance, uh, a freelance person who can look through with you with this, or you can uh, look with the client and figure that out. Or print shop right, as well. right. Yeah, that can take that kind of stuff is so technical and can change too if the client is still deciding the flavor or deciding the ingredients. So it's really cool that you get to work with someone, a production designer who can help you with that. But even still, you can always get your friends to read it, get some other people to read it so that they can pick up on mistakes. Because sometimes when you're working so closely with it, you mm -hmm. start to like be blind to like the words. <laughs> you're just looking at the design. So that's a really good tip. Exactly. So over here we have like a little paragraph informing what uh, the brand is about and what their mission is. So it's really important where you look at the pack in the front is very simple. It kind of like start attracting you like, oh, I feel like it's plant based. Um, it's planet friendly. I'm so curious. And you turn around, you reading more like, oh, I get it. Then yes. you want to buy this product. So it's a it's a 360 experience of um, holistic experience. Um, and you have to add in all those little details to convince them to purchase it. Yes. So this is really cool. This is a lot more type than we've been working with in the previous parts of the process. 
So I'm interested to see how you're going to organize it. Yes. So sometimes, you know, with the client, they like adding a lot of text. Um, so that's where you're going to call your copywriter come in and save your life. Because <laughs> sometimes it doesn't fit. And, you know, they can short it up and like, hey, we can, this is what you gave us. And this is what you, we can that is shorter. Because you think of like, you have to think of the consumer. They're not going to stand in with a book. Um, right. So it needs to be short and smart so they can understand right away and grab it you don't want to waste their time because when it's too long they're not even going to read it then what's the point is it there you know yes you have to make sure that the attention that you capture you use it wisely right so if they're going to read it make sure it's to the point i love that you mentioned that that you work with a copywriter to um maybe convince the client to to take it down a notch to edit some stuff out because that's really challenging. Sometimes uh, you'll have a client who's like, I need to have this entire about the history of the brand on every package and your copywriter can save you. Um, have you ever had to do that yourself? Let's say you didn't have a copywriter. You had to explain to the client, um, <clears throat> this isn't working. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yes, uh, usually I, have to tell them um, that it doesn't fit in the package. Just explain them why that the consumer is not going to read. You can just like explain it a little bit and just put your website so they can go on your website and learn more about it. Um, That's true. So, yes. Yeah. I think as soon as they understand it, they, they'll uh, let you uh, short it up. Yes. Just like always explaining to them why you rec your recommendation is to shorten it up. That mm -hmm. always helps. Now we have this amazing question here. What is your favorite and then least favorite part of the design process and why? Um, my favorite part of the design is actually design the pack and color it. Um, I think my least one, that's a hard one. I think it's from the beginning, really sit down and, you know, think about the strategy with the client, um, like this, like realistic part and telling the story. It could be very interesting. Um, Sometimes they don't buy into the story. You have to come up with another one. So that could be like a little yin yang before you start designing it. Um, so that's, I would say, is my least favorite part. <laughs> right, because sometimes that can take a long time, I imagine, right? Like the back mm -hmm. and forth of the strategy can exactly. kind of make you a little bit, you know, you just want to get in and do the work, but you have to wait for everything to be decided. Yes, but then that's, even the strategy is the most important here to have a successful design is extremely important. It's not like the most boring part, but it's like the key of success of the design because you need to have a solid background before you come in design that you know what you're doing because otherwise everything just gonna fall apart and the consumer don't get what are they buying. Yes, yes. So even though it's not the, the most exciting part, it is still like foundational. You have to make sure you do it right so you can do a good job with the design portion of it all. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, this is looking really cute. I love that you have the little social media symbols there. Makes it look very official, right? Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> like a real brand. And over here, I really want the text to pop because I just swapped the font because it's going to be the secondary font because this font is too stressed out. It's really uh -huh. hard to read when it is like uh, too, too many much. text, too much okay. text. So I uh, turn another one that is more uh, circular. Okay. Uh, as it's like a lot easier to read. Actually, the name of the font is circular. <laughs> ah, perfect, perfect. <laughs> and do you usually limit how many types of font you have in one project? Um, I would say two to three, three really the max, but uh, usually okay. two. Yeah, that makes sense. I feel like that way everything stays consistent, but in this uh, in this um, instance, you do need a little, that third one, but it looks so similar to the other one that it almost looks like a different weight or something, right? Like exactly. it could have been a variation of the same family. Mm -hmm. And so that, that keeps your eye from being a little too, from being overwhelmed. So this looks nice any that's like a little advice for anyone in the chat if you're wondering how many different fonts you should have in a project two to three and pick the third one very carefully <laughs> to make yes. sure it matches 
because if you think of it like at the end you're gonna like hand it to the client and if it's too many font they don't know how to use it like, like <laughs> screw it up <laughs> that's because they, true yes because they they have they're gonna do it on like social media or you know like facebook app and stuff and that's where the in-house designer come in and even if you um give them a brand guideline sometimes it's still <laughs> <laughs> I can sense that you're speaking from experience here. When you hand off the brand guidelines and you see someone destroying them, um, it happens. How do you feel in that moment? Do you feel like you need to reach out and correct them? Do you feel like, oh well, that's up to them? How do you handle that? I think it's more well, oh well because <laughs> you know you did went through your best to try and they they pay you for what you do but i mean if you care i think you could i never did so um <laughs> because it's hard to like you already showed them the way they didn't want to live it's almost like when a friend comes to you for advice you give them the advice and then they don't do it you're like okay you n no more advice for you <laughs> Well, sometimes so, it's really good at it though not all of them but not all of them not, not all of them. that's true yeah. there's some good clients out there who follow everything but you're right if you start adding too many different elements like three fonts you have more likelihood that they could get confused yes exactly because you know when that's why when you do your um brand guideline you need to be very very specific because they just like you know it's your children you want to make it look good and make the client understand uh why so they can be conscious about it the more specific you are the better yes i totally agree with that you have to kind of foolproof it for any possible scenario that they might you know have a little confusion about you got to solve it for them ahead of time and i'm exactly. sure that you do that because you've been so thorough throughout this process and with your presentations on your portfolio that I'm sure your brand guidelines are just as like specific and tight. Yes. So, so probably here, that doesn't happen too much to you these days. Uh, um, so here, as you see at the side, I wanna keep the this pretty structure over here. And since here at the bottom, they talk about um, what it regenerating regenerative farming is. So thing at the top, I'm gonna do a little landscape of a farm. Oh, fun. cute. I'm excited for that. Um, I love that you, you include so much illustration in this, um, in this design. What do you think is like the, cause this is, I think for people early on can be a little confusing to understand the difference between graphic design and illustration. What do you think the key difference between those two industries is? I think it's, uh, Pretty much, because like I think when it's come to illustration, it's a little more personal because you, you have your own style and people come for you because your style and they love it. So you have you mostly have a little more freedom to create what you want, and they usually like um, kind of look at the design and they respect you as an artist. Then when mm. it comes to graphic design, you please them a hundred percent because at the graphic designer. Um, you need to have different kind of styles to answer what they want because sometimes you have only one style and that's not what they want and you, there's nothing you can do about right, it. Right, right. So for graphic design, you have to wear a lot more different styles. But for illustration, you could really just do your style and people come to you just for that. Yes, exactly. Of course, um, there are some uh, like design studios that have like a specific design style, but still a lot broader, more range than than the illustration mm -hmm. only. So yes, that's that's a really good way to think about it. And how did you go from I know before you were an illustrator. So how did you go from illustration to graphic design? Um, I just in illustration, I took it's called illustration and design. So we did have one or two class in typography and layout. So that's where I like really fall in love with uh, typography and everything. So I'm like, it's a perfect uh, combination. I'm like, well, let's try and it work. At first, I'm going to be honest with all of you, it's hard <laughs> because I don't know what type of my picking. I don't know what am I doing. Um, 
but it's just trend your eyes. How I do is like I look on Pinterest and see what uh, what people are doing, what type are they pairing, and that's like training your eyes help a lot for the shortcut of learning. Yes. Um, yes. I I definitely agree with that, and and I love to see like an illustrator go into design and just like. Thrive, right? Because you have such a other way of thinking about visuals. You know, not everything has to be. Um, well, you have more language, right? More tools to work mm-hmm. with, and you can design icons. It's it's so fun to see people kind of work between those two mediums. Um, we have a question here, and I'm wondering if you know the answer. Maybe you can give us a hint. Um, People are in the chat want to know if this type of design has style of design has a name. Do you know? Is there like a specific style going on here that you could give it a name? I would say it's Memphis-ish. A little bit. That's, of the, that's what I was thinking outline. too. Because of, of the, the bold colors and outlines. So there you mm-hmm. go, guys. The name of this design style is memphis Memphis. This and Memphis, uh, kind of around there. If you uh, go on Behance or Pinterest, I'm sure you could pull up some more similar kind of style of work if you want to be more inspired by it. Yeah, because like I think there's a lot of style out there, and people like to mix match and create a new style of illustration. So sometimes it's like a mix of everything. It's a mix, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why that question's a little hard, right? Because it's not like exact, but it's close. Yes. So there you go, guys. Hope hope. Hopefully that opens your world. You can go check out some more different design styles. Oh, I love this, that you're using elements from other parts. Yeah. That's so smart. Is that way you don't have to redraw it. You get to keep keep it consistent and work a little faster. Exactly. There we go. So cute. Bringing it to the foreground. A little bit here and there. So cute. Because I think like this illustration really engaging people. So it's like really important like just to have it on around. Be like, oh, like because in the front is like really abstract form. Uh, landscape people have a sense and they turn like, oh, in actual form. So it's like an expansion of what you have on the front. Yes, expanding, like- expanding the world. And because this uh, farming was a really big part for this brand, right? Because they we had a whole conversation about regenerative farming. So in order to tell that story a little further, you can do so with some of this illustration. And I think that's so smart without having to like, you know, do a whole history about regenerative farming on the package. You can still kind of nod to it as the root of this brand. So I think that's super smart. Yeah. Um, ah, because so cute. Because what you, if you think about it, this is a really, um, dry topic because it's so much in science but with the illustration make people engage and want to find out about it um if you think of it it's almost like a children book with an image you want to yes. read yes what is this illustration is about so exactly exactly you're like telling the story visually which i think is way more compelling um because it's just more universal even a little kid could pick it up and identify that it's a farm and Mm -hmm. it's plant friendly even if they can't read so that's amazing i love it and it is looking super cute are you going to add anything else what's happening here what are we adding to this to this farm so i want this uh cake pop to be the sun (laughs) oh my gosh so cute that's a really (laughs) smart idea idea it looks it's gonna look adorable with the face and everything uh, with oh, a little face, like just that. like sunshine going on. <laughs> yes, it's like um, reminding me of like some show. I can't remember the name of the show right now, but oh my gosh, this is perfect. So I cute. love that you're just integrating all these different elements to it. Yeah, because like this. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's so cute. I'm like laughing at it too. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's have some sun ray. Yes, add some sun rays. Oh, amazing question just came came in from Guto Santos. Um, they want to know how much time do you spend in a project like this typically? I know this is like a super fast version, but usually how much time would you spend on this level of project? Um, so it depends, you know, like this 
let's say this is already at stage two or three with the client because at first um i only gonna do maybe two flavor only two flavor to present the client to see the consistent green so they understand their brand colors and after they choose it i expand so usually in one design i spend around uh, 20 minutes and then move to the next design because you want to do as much a design as possible and then when you pick the one you come in and fine tune it so i think in let's say i one design from beginning to the end um it would take around 30 hours yes yes yeah. that's just for one let's say one container right um now i would say from uh beginning to end let's say this they pick this design and then you go toward until the finish line to it like uh, 30 hours, okay okay few hours here and there different how fast you are as well because yesterday i was showing how fast it can uh, work so i'm I'm not trying to grab, but I, I work pretty fast because, <laughs> <laughs> because it's important to keep up with the speed and um, the more options you show, um, the better. Because yes, the, yes that's, you can, that's very true because you're working like against the clock. You have multiple projects going on. You're trying to get as far with one client as possible. So I hope that answers your question, Guto Santos you know, 30 hours maybe to finish something entirely, but, you know, the quicker designs, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes to get those done before they're in the final stage. Exactly. And right now we're doing it in four hours to give you kind of the speed run of it all, how he would design and go about a design process. But yes, this kind of stuff does usually take a little longer. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, this little cake pop is so happy. <laughs> it's yes. just a beaming ray of sunshine i love it um how many projects danny would you say you're usually working on at once so i would say usually from three to five projects so usually three projects as has that we do is three big projects and you know, two three other small things to do or you can support other designer helping them you know it's good to help them because sometimes they're gonna help you back too when you need a hand yes yeah that's true that's true you got to be a part of the team and, and contribute and because everyone's working at a different pace and has different projects at different stages so mm -hmm. i can totally see what you mean maybe you have a little break you can help out yeah. who knows they'll help you back some other time Oh, I love these little, these are like little cotton candy sprinkles. I don't know what they are, but they add some, some fun to the, to the illustration. They are just little <laughs> illustration of uh, the product itself. The cake like pops. A, yeah. The cake pop. Yes. Got it. I put it all together. You guys took me a second, <laughs> but it is very cute to see them like in their little space. Turn around. Yeah. Um, so, so I know. Wait, wait, where are we at now? What do you think? Are we good with this uh, farming illustration? Um, I think it's uh, pretty much there. I'm, I'm sure there's some fine tune. We don't have to like finish, finish now because we have a lot to cover today. And I think you guys have a really good sense where this goes. You can add more detail if you like. Yes, totally. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I can picture it, but it also is in a really good place. Exactly. There we are. So what do so you think here, is next here? So next we, I want to make it even more fun. I want to make this uh, cake pop talk to you. Um, so we have some um, information here, uh, like a shorter version of the other one. Um, generative farming makes soy health, makes soy health a priority, which in return make more nutri dense food. Perfect. Cool. Yeah, that is a really good point. And I feel like really captures what you showed us in the previous slides yesterday mm -hmm. yeah. in part one. If you didn't catch that part, you can go back and check it out. And this is like all of that in one quick sentence. <laughs> I feel like this is where the copywriter would came in and, and made it perfect for you. Yes. So I'm going to make it another square. You know, Using like the in, shape tool. Yeah. yeah. Do you know in cartoon, like when you get that bubble that 
person talking the speech to you. bubble yes yes exactly this is what i'm doing but is this square instead because our design is more rigid and square i think a uh, circle cloud is not going to fit into the design so that's why i pick it this way oh that makes sense so you're thinking about the other shapes that you have going on in the layout and kind of keeping it within that world, even though you're going to do a speech bubble. That's a really good point because some people may be thinking, why not a circle? But most of this design is square. So he's keeping it consistent there. And that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I can't wait to see how this cake pop starts talking to me because she is so sassy. Um, <laughs> I'm very excited for it. Um, I wanted to ask you while, while you're working here with the shape tool, what is some um, client feedback how, or how do you help your clients give you good feedback? Because sometimes clients say things like make it pop or, you know, make it bigger or stuff like that, that doesn't really help you. So how do you help your clients give good feedback? Um, usually I would ask them to type it down and send it to me so I have time to like, take it and then think about the question that you're going to ask that to clarify because some of it is not very really clarified you ask keep it more simple you, you could ask so how simple it is the more specific the more specific the better as i say yesterday simple mean very different with different people so client doesn't pick the same design language that you are um, so it's really good to like find out what do they mean because they are business yes. people, right? So they don't have art background. So uh, it's really important to like find out uh, what they are about. Yes, yes. Do you ever have them send you like a video or anything like that? Um, it's never happened because I think it's better to for them to write it down. Write when it. you write down, you really thinking. And when you say it, it could be a little wishy-washy. That's true. That's true. Yeah, especially because then also you have like the proof that they said it right you can be like right here you said you wanted it to be more simple <laughs> <laughs> you're and right. that's what we did <laughs> you're right because sometimes it's not one person who give the feedback there is like i don't know teams, five yeah. big teams so it's good for them to sit down all together and agree in a decision instead of this person say that that person say that and at the end you you so confused so right it's because you get to... conflicting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is good for them to like do their homework and then go very into Very smart, very smart. Okay. So you got to teach um, your clients how to give you feedback, help them help you um, is a key part of being a graphic designer when you're working with these different brands and when you're working with brand identity and packaging design. So that's a great tip here from Danny. Just get the, ask the right questions, get specific with them so that they can provide you all the information you need to finish something um, correctly. Yes. With no, with no contradictions. <laughs> that, that's um, totally right. what, what is this? <laughs> Little I'm, hands? Yes, I'm giving the full body. They're holding the planet. They're supporting it. So it's, the message is so simple when you look at this. Like, oh, it's supporting the planet. So yes, yeah. okay, getting bringing it to life here with a little. Um, I think it's called like anamorphism, or anamorphism. maybe I'm, I don't know if I'm correct, you guys. That could be something random, but I think it's like that when you bring uh, a character to life, you give it a human uh, uh element. So here you're doing that even more. We go from face to full body now, she's speaking. What could be next for her? She's gonna take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> because in the front you see this and it's like oh she's more talking right now she's this she's that it, it's so entertaining um, it is very entertaining <laughs> yeah so you have cute. to keep the entertaining going because it's gonna make they buy the product and make the client happy I agree. I agree. Um, if you're just tuning in here with us, if you're just joining welcome we're on day two of Danny Vo 
packaging design for this adorable vegan cake pop. He's using Illustrator and showing us how he creates this from beginning to end. Right now we're creating the full label. And if you have any questions for Danny about career, about the packaging design process, bring your questions to us, drop them in the chat, but be sure to drop them in the Behance chat. So come over to Behance if you're watching on, on YouTube. Go to behance.net slash Adobe Live. Join our chat here at Adobe Live and we'll be sure to answer your questions while we continue seeing this amazing process and this amazing girl just come to life. She's a boss. Um, and yeah, join us over here. Danny, yes. this girl, I feel like she needs stilettos. Like <laughs> too much, <laughs> too much if we give her heels. Exactly. And it, would, it wouldn't be um, as uh, juvenile, right? If we gave her gave her heels maybe but right. maybe yes it's just a feet um, just a little like feet it, that match the feet. hands exactly we are and she's here supporting the earth just like uh you are part of this community you just like her you're supporting yes exactly and i love that you are always working smarter you're like copy uh flip it instead of creating it all from scratch again mm -hmm. i feel like you know that there are little shortcuts you can take that are just gonna make your workflow so much faster right i mean i would do another phase for the earth that doesn't repeat the other product but you know for now it's just help us to see it faster too um, because True. we have a lot to cover today definitely it makes sense it makes sense i feel like that's something that you mentioned yesterday that sometimes you just put some illustration in as a placeholder to see if it works before you start designing completely custom. If yeah. you um, didn't catch that on yesterday's stream, that's what he is referring to. And I think um, it makes so much sense. It explains why you can work so fast. Mm -hmm. So over <laughs> here, I think I'm going to have some um, ingredient icon that you said earlier, like a rose and a lavender. Yes, let's do it. I'm curious how you're going to illustrate this. I think the rose is going to be a little tricky. <laughs> yes, roses can be a little a little confusing. There's so many folds, but you can just gesture. Exactly. It can be abstract. Yeah. Yes, I am. Because when you put into this, usually the, uh, the, uh, the ingredient could be a little more elaborated. Let's right. say I'm, I'm inventing this uh rose petal but yes okay organic rose petals good idea could, could even add just to make it three sometimes it's a little easier to since you have a lot of vertical space to cover yes. here mm -hmm. i feel like that's how design goes right you, some places you have to cut uh the the copy in some places you need to add a little bit more <laughs> yeah <laughs> to make it all balanced you know that's the game that's definitely part of the game here yep. oh my gosh i'm so interested to see how you do this rose pencil tool you guys yes, no shapes I, just pencil i'm gonna keep it a hundred percent with you i have no idea how i'm gonna do this but let's wing it <laughs> let's wing it i have a feeling you know how you're gonna do it i feel like <laughs> i'm sure you've drawn a rose before now you're just going to make a simple version. Yeah. Like um, I see it happening, you guys. Trust the process. Because sometimes it's the beauty of it. When you're not sure, you make it just like blurring your head. That's make the flower so stylized. But you know, like for sure, it, it, it gets too realistic and it's made the sense of like stylistic of the illustration. So sometimes just like don't think too much and just try it. Don't be scared. And then it's going to come out, wow, original. Yes, I agree with that. And I feel like we can see it happening here already. Oh my gosh, I'm so ready for this last little bit. I think, I don't know. I don't know what's happening next. You guys, we're alive. This anything could happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, this is looking good. There's so much you can do just with that pen tool once you really master it. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it took you a while to learn how to use the pen tool or it was natural for you? Um, it was pretty natural. Um, I had a teacher back in college and he's really good um, using Illustrator and he was very specific. You know, learning Illustrator 
I would say it was so painful in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he was really harsh, but it's totally worth it. I really master everything in Illustrator here. Um, yes, it definitely at first when you're just getting used to it can be a little overwhelming. Yeah, especially if you're used to using something like Photoshop, and Illustrator has so many more options. It can be intimidating, but you can watch Adobe Lives, you can watch Danny work, and you'll realize that it's pretty simple, and you can get the hang of it with just a little practice. Yeah, because I feel oh. like there we go. This looks, looks amazing, rose, right? Danny. I was like, really? "What is he gonna do? What's happening?" And it just came together. So wow, my heart was racing. No, I'm kidding. I was. <laughs> I knew you. Were, I knew you were gonna do a perfect job here. <laughs> there we are. Just oh my gosh! Spin. And it looks like curvy because you have curves throughout the design, so it mm -hmm. made sense to include to include exactly. a nice curve. That looks really cute, you guys. And it just yeah. goes to show that with just some practice, you can kind of remember what things look like and figure out how you want to interpret them for yourself. So here we are. So neat. Oh. You know, sometimes this happens. You forget to grab something. That's the yeah. reality of, of designing. <laughs> Organic You're like grows. working with groups and layers and clipping masks and things get crazy. And then the next one is going to be a lavender. Lavender is easier. <laughs> lavender is easier. It's true. It's true. So cute. I'm excited to see it all come together. And it's it's really interesting to um, just like, I love how you're just like leaning into the illustration for this design instead of, you know, just expanding the world with every single little element. I think that's really thoughtful and it's going to make the packaging just be so like, wow, there's so much happening here. Yeah. Um, you want you want people to look at the whole packaging. You don't want them to look at just the front, you know, at least not exactly. just Exactly. Now you're making them want to look at all aspects of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a little tip. So cute to see these. Um, do you ever um, create any like illustration libraries for a brand like you know if sweet smile was a real brand would you create a lot of illustrations that they can use for other for social or for other elements like they'd be able to use any of these for social yeah absolutely because sometimes you create them a library you take this apart and then um, they can use it whatever they want because there's so much expansion there um, and, you know, sometimes you can even do a few social media for them if they were willing to pay for it. And, you know, it's going to be really helpful for them because it's give them a little guide how to do it um, properly. Because sometimes you need to take a uh, um, initiator of like, hey, I want this brand to look right and just talk to them about it. And they're going to be open. Yes, I agree with you, too. And then that gives them like they look way more like custom instead mm -hmm. of cookie cutter can you tell me like what that is that you're using where you're doing like a reverse eyedropper a right? reverse eyedropper yes so you click this eyedrop and then you hit option let's say here you sorry restart you click that eyedrop button you click the what the color that you want and you press option hone it and then click on another color and it's gonna and it drops it. it that is it so cool it. i was seeing that you were doing that but i was like wait am i i thought maybe you were doing like using um the direct selection and then doing it but no you're using eyedropper that is so handy it's like yeah mm -hmm. i'm calling it reverse eyedropper i'm sure it has a specific name but just because you get to uh decide where the style goes where you wherever you select the eyedropper that is so cool with just the option key Mm -hmm. A little handy tip here from Danny. He was doing it like it, it's second nature to him. So I had to call it out for anyone watching who's interested in learning all those little shortcuts that make you work faster. I feel yes. like, you know, so many and, and they're just like natural to you. You don't even think that it's like a secret. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do I spell diary, right? So diary. Sure. I think it's D-I-R-Y. Oh. D I R D D A I R Y. Oh. It's Gary. Yes. 
theory. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. It happens yes. to me all the time. I have to Google, make sure it's natural. Yes. Um, oh, this is so cool. So what are you going to write for this last one? Gluten-free, because it's for Gluten everyone. Free. Everyone says, welcome to join this earth uh, revolution. Because even you gluten-free, you diet-free, or even if you, none of this, and you're still able to eat it. So everyone can be a part of this. That's amazing. I love it. This is so cool. You have filled up the space beautifully. Everything is like in harmony. Everything looks the same style, the same illustration style. This is amazing. I, I just love how this came together. Mm -hmm. So yeah, here we are. I think I got the little thing that came there. A little, oh, okay. Some little rays, adorable. Little ray. She's happy. <laughs> She's She's happy to be there and she's glowing from the sun. <laughs> Getting into our universe um, metaphors. Okay. So, so we're almost done here. Um, you know, this can be, um, I think, refined, but you have the idea. So yes. here we are. Here's the food pack. You have the side of pack, you have the top of pack, and it's so fun to uh, go through. Um, I love, can you zoom in for, to the farm for us? Yes. It's just so adorable. It's another <laughs> really smart use of the cake pop. I feel like you have the cake pop just in the front. You also have it in the back and then over on the other side. So you really tackled like all three kind of angles other than the nutrition panel. Like it, no matter, even if it's on the shelf and it's like on the side, you still know uh, what cake pop you're looking at. So I think that's really cool and very thoughtful now. What do you think we're we're gonna do next here for your part of your process? So next, let's do some mock-up and see how it looks. This part is so exciting to me. I love this part because I feel like it brings it into real life, you know? Exactly. So I have this uh, lineup already in flat so that we can start putting it in Photoshop. Let's do it. I have it here. So let's open it, Photoshop. Do, 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 do. do you Maybe. usually do you have a place where you go for your favorite mock-ups um i kind of like use this kind of everywhere i look it up but i think one of it is creative market is have really really good mock-up um uh, mock-up maison is very good too um if you want to look it up they have a really high let, okay, let me show you real quick uh, let's do it so there we go Oh, cool. Those are very cool. And look at the website. It's beautiful. It and is. It, looks, it is. It looks so real. Like It does. It's it looks lighting. super legit. Exactly. And they're not expensive. 15, 20 yeah, bucks. Yeah. And you can put it in your portfolio and really make it like just look super professional. Like you were talking about earlier. Presentation is everything. And so if you can present it in a very like beautiful way, it's yeah. totally worth it. So now... Um, I know that the mock-up that you find like, oh, it looks like it fit, but actually it doesn't actually the size of your, what are you designing? But there's a trick that I just go around it. I can show it to you. But otherwise- Show us all of your tricks, Danny. We're here <laughs> for that. So, but otherwise you can, you know, if it's a real product, you're going to shoot it. But here That's it's true. not. But um, we can do this. It's still going to look amazing. I believe in you 100%, Danny. I hope everyone in the chat is ready to see this brand come to life. We've been working so hard on it, watching you sweat, and now we're <laughs> going to now we're going to see it come together. Okay. So, say like this and let's drop it in here. Drag and drop from one program to the other. I hadn't seen that happen like that before, so that's already new to me. Mhm. Mm and then now we're going to scale it up. Obviously, you can see it's not fitting. Like you're panicking. Oh, my God. I just spent oh money gosh, for this. It doesn't out. work. We're freaking <laughs> out. And the, um, the cap at the top. Oh, my God. It's like thicker. So, you know, you know this is what you're going to do. You're going to stretch it. <laughs> <laughs> stretch it. And then let's separate the top and the bottom. Okay. So that, so that you can stretch the cap as well. Okay, let's do it. What tool are you going to use for that? 
So let's do this uh, convert to smart object. So it's there. So now you can separate and just duplicate. I'm curious and then just here. um okay with the just selection mask it. tool okay here, right mask, here, it. mask it mask it you have the top so you have the bottom Ooh. i'm so interested i feel like masking is very complicated in my mind so when i when i see other people do it i need to know everything okay yeah. so you have like two masks on each uh let me see real quick currently it's not working it happens. It's confusing it's happened. sometimes, you guys, when you're yeah. working live and you're trying to make sure oh, everything is okay. Perfect. So now uh, let's deselect this and stretch it down. And right here, scale it. Okay. Oh, here we go. So here we are. Hit save. Doesn't look too bad, right? Yes. But, no, you can't even tell. It looks like like how you designed it. Yeah, but if you want to even sacrifice yourself, select the whole image and stretch back. Oh, now it's proportional. Oh, there. That is so smart. You just said, mm, "Let's squish the whole thing. The whole mockup is gonna get squished." And now yeah. it's like the exact proportions that you originally designed. I hadn't thought about that, and that is super. That is super smart because you know you can the mock-up is not um precious the design is precious yeah you want to crop in a little bit because it's to zoom out mm -hmm. two and here we are and Bank. let's do the other one because now it's perfect you don't have to stress out here anymore just stress from the inside that come out here it's perfect okay okay yeah because you already did it that first time Mm hmm And now let's do the top. Oh, I'm excited about this part. Because yeah. the top is like subtle, but very, very cute. Yes. Sorry. Whoops. So many tabs, you know, you guys, so many tabs. No. <laughs> Let me know in the chat if your mind is blown about how beautiful this mock-up is already looking. I'm sure this is going to make it just take it to the next level right now. I can't wait to see this. Perfect fit. Perfect fit. Oh my gosh, it looks so cool. It looks so legit and real. I can imagine this cake pop at the store already. Yeah, and then, you know, there's like little white here. <clears throat> you can just come in Photoshop yourself. Um, just create another right. layer, but multiply and just pick the color here and just go over it but i mean it's precise work i won't spend too much time <laughs> here but you know yeah. what i show you, you gotta how to do you it. gotta zoom in and really do it delicately but you can do it and no one would know yeah no one would know um how would you and here we are so the brand is uh, master is uh green so for the case study it's good you have to own the green because the green is the evergreen color of the brand. So it's Got really it. accented. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're, that's the color you're trying to play up. Oh, it does also look really cool. Right yes, so it looks cool. like ice cream, green. Like I'm ready to eat that. That looks so cute. I can't wait to see what the other ones look like. Yeah. So, you know, like we have uh, four flavor. You can literally duplicate this and extend the other one and now you have four just little yes, shop exactly foot of shop work is i know it's a lot of labor i know but you, it's gonna be worth it because you're gonna spend a couple k to shoot this but this gonna oh, again sorry <laughs> it's um, a habit um and you can Asking do this for trick question <laughs> yeah, it is. Just forget about it. Um, so, <laughs> so, you know, this mock-up cost $15 and it's look close to reality. Like, why not? Yes, I think that's a really big deal too because like we were saying before, a lot of your um, clients, they are business people. They're not visual people. And so when you show them the visual, how it would look like in real life, it really helps you sell the concept even more, right? Mm -hmm. yes they're like oh i believe in it um even if they didn't like how it looked in illustrator they might love how it looks 
as the actual package. It just show that oh, he's kind of make it real. What's the magic like? Because they don't know this kind of tone. They don't know what you. How did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes, you can blow their minds with a mock-up. That's very, very true. Because they'll be like, you'll be like, yeah, I printed one. I have exclusive ones in my office, but it's all Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I shot it. <laughs> yeah, I shot it. <laughs> no, you have to be honest with your clients, but it's yeah. funny. It's funny. Um, okay. Doing the same process here. I just love that you're just owning it. You figured out how to make the mock-up work. There's definitely some mock-ups out there that you can get that are like precise, and you know have a lot of custom options. But even if you don't, like Danny's showing us today, you can make most mock-up work if you just maybe hack it a little bit, do a little customization. You can make it work for your project. Lovely, yeah, sweet. sweet honey banana. These look amazing. I feel like the tops really just, they're like a perfect finishing touch. Because mm -hmm. you want it to be repetitive because this could look a little boring. So if you yeah. have the opportunity to make it different, it's fun when you put like, when you see of like, when you shoot your um, <clears throat> project, you have one like this and one flip like this. It's give a nice contrast instead of oh, repeating again. Yeah, that's true. Unless that's you, true. yeah. Unless that's the vision is to be. Really Unless that one, exactly. Yeah. Unless that one decline one and they want it to be the same. So it's sharp easier than okay. Right, right, right. Okay. And um, do you usually work with brands once um, it's time to shoot the product? Or do you have somebody else on your team at Hatch who handles that? Um, sometimes we uh, have people attached to do it when it's you know when it's simple uh, you don't take a lot of like styling because sometimes you have like, a lot of prop and styling and setting it could get a little complicated that's where you're gonna hire external uh, photographer but we have a really talented uh, photographer at task uh, her name is Lila and she's wonderful um, she's been helping us a lot um, and you know sometimes you can tell the client too like Hey, it's gonna good for you. It's good for me. So I gonna do free art direction for you, but you're gonna pay for the shoot and let's exchange it. Win win comf uh, win win. Ooh, nice. Yeah, it's like an add on, but it's an add on that really benefits you as the designer because then you have amazing photos of your work for your portfolio, which Danny said before, super important to get future work. How you present your work, how polished everything looks is a really big deal, just as big of a deal as the actual strength of the project itself, the design work itself. Yeah, because you're a designer, you, you have a vision for your brand and you have the vision, what style of the photography, photography that you want, so you have yes. to navigate. So everything works together. Um, this actually the next step we're gonna show you uh, uh, photo shoot art direction after this mock-up and we can look Ooh, at that. I'm excited. Stay tuned for that, you guys. I do want to remind you, Danny, that in like nine minutes, we're going to do our artist spotlight. Um, you still have plenty of time, but just giving you a little heads up there and a little heads up for everyone in the chat, too. Right. So this here we are. I think you already know what's going on. Um, hit save. Just right here. Beautiful. Yeah, it here. I think I cropped it a bit too much, but here we are. And we also have this one, but I think you already know how it works. Uh, we can jump into this right now. Whatever you want to do next, we still have nine minutes before the artist spotlight. And then when we come back, we have another 10 minutes. Exactly. So Perfect. up to you. Yeah. Yep. So here you have photography art direction. Um, if you put it side by side, it's very colorful. And yes. here you need to have it colorful. What I like about this is like, how they shoot the honey, oh my God, it's like, I want to eat it right now. It's so yummy, <laughs> it's so detailed, it's so dramatic. I love it. Um, I love how this give a fun personal perspective. So let's see on your box laying out and it's full style is very imagine this is the ball that she's eating and how delicious this like chocolate is. It's really important detail to play because it's make the consumer want to buy when they see it on Instagram or thing like that. 
Yes, this is so cool. So this would be just the mood board for the photography direction, not the mood board for the branding. It's a separate mood board, correct? Yes, exactly. So I usually included this mood board into um, the brand guideline, so the the client know that hey, this is the brand, and they show the photo card photographer like hey, this is the direction that we want. Right. So they Again. don't end up shooting it like in nature, and it's like doesn't make yeah. sense. Totally it, different brand. Exactly. Okay. Really handy. So here we have Instagram. So when you think of Instagram, you're gonna think some posts gonna be just type, some posts gonna be uh, the the packaging design itself. Another mm-hmm. one is lifestyle. So yes. remember these three that you can include differently so they can see how it works. So let's say I choose this one over here. Perfect. And so you would actually show this to the client, right? Like, yes, this is not just internal for you. This is so the client is aware of the different kind of posts that they can um, publish on their, in this case, Instagram, but across social media. Yeah, across social media and how how the pacing work too. Like, oh, this right now we already have a uh, lifestyle here. The next one is gonna be the product itself, or it could be typography. Right. Right. Yes. And how do you, Danny, work now, you know, Instagram and social media in general, there's so many sizes. Mm -hmm. There's vertical, square, like the crops. There's so many different sizes. So how do you deal with all of that? Um, How do you help your client navigate that? Um, Usually I tell them just stick with uh, the square. And then if you want to expand to vertical for story, uh, you can expand it but usually when you do that it's good to when you create the illustration create this long and then at the end you just crop it so it's easier you like prepare it instead of just expand it take a lot more time got it yes yes okay i see what you mean yeah, yeah. that's definitely tricky these days um but there are ways to work around it and just know and prepare for it um as a brand and help your clients prepare for it too. just tell them ahead of time like Keep in mind, you might want to make this vertical. So we have these longer illustrations. And um, Danny, we can refer them to the library of illustrations that sometimes you create, depending on the brand. Those illustrations can help them too. Mm-hmm. Oh so my gosh, here, this is going to be let's so Let's say cute. if you want to repeat that here, it's like really educational and it's engaging people. So you can have a few posts like this how this bone talking to you and so did you have this lifestyle yummy illustration so it's like a really nice pace um gorgeous i feel like the fact that this little uh sweet smile vegan pop is like uh, a little person really helps for social media because you can have it speaking it can have different messages for different reasons different talking points it really helps the brand live in like the social media era when you have a little bit of a mascot yeah if you want to go beyond that you can hire um animator and you make this one waving at you or talking or jumping around it's just so much thing that you can there's do there's so this. much stuff you can do so even much. now in the world of vertical video like tiktok or reels you could even get a mascot suit made oh. and and the person oh. The whole mascot can be doing stuff for video. So, you know, I know some brands are doing it. Maybe Sweet Smile is next. Exactly. <laughs> so um, here and show a little extent on the farm. Give it like a little contest. Where is it at? Um, yes. This is fun. So uh, fun. Let's so bring cute. some leaf here. To fill up yeah, the just, empty space. Just integrating all of those different elements f- from throughout the branding process into all of the different touch points for mm-hmm. the actual brand is so smart. Exactly. So let's say this here. But then I feel like, hmm, what can I do for this? So I think this is what we're going to do. I'm curious. Since everything is outlined, let's create an box for this one so okay. it can marry with uh, the others. it can be a little bit more cohesive with the rest of the illustration style kind of keep those 
lines going since the photography doesn't have any lines let's bring them back in yeah okay so many layers happening uh why is this not oh wrong one whoops classic it happens to everyone there's so many layers sometimes in these projects of course things get a little confusing okay i'm very interested so since everything is rounded so we have a little frame into it okay cute yes because like the speech bubble on the left is rounded we have a lot of rounded corners so he's bringing that back into the photography so it's not just the photo we We have some of the character cute and then now you have room for typography as well like you can put some pack line uh you're gonna repeat you have the um the saving yes, yes that one. one so neat now a reminder you guys we are it's almost time for our artist spotlight but if you haven't already be sure to drop your questions in the chat so we can get to them when we come back now danny it's time it's time for our artist spotlight the time has come so let's uh put that if you want to put that uh in the in the spot you feel free or we can just head on over to the artist spotlight today we have do, 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 um, so for today's artist spotlight we have veronique la fortune i'm not french i can't say it in french <laughs> i said it in spanish you guys so sorry but um how do how would you say it danny i would say veronique la fortune there you go, you guys. Um, so <laughs> let's check it. out her work. It's amazing uh, designer, graphic designer. So what do you have to show us? Yeah, it's- so she actually uh, finished, graduated from UCAM. So it's like the same university as I do. And I think uh, she started uh, her freelance like five years ago from now. And it's, she started like big grow and like um, it's, woman on and it's like the whole team is a uh, woman power coming together and she is so talented um let's look at her work and this is her team and look Amazing. at all of them they look like badass designer they totally look like, they're like supermodel <laughs> <laughs> fashion um, so fashion, fashionable exactly so um her website called beauty club uh we can go on her being hands and look at a few project or what yes do. i think it was on the home page there the behance oh, it's okay like right there at the bottom yeah. right perfect here we are so uh, one of her my favorite work from her is mush up and this is such a beautiful project it's breathtaking look at the photography alteration it's beautiful the illustration is like oh my god the illustration is so complex, mm-hmm. but also simple objects, just very connected. Exactly. And yes, it's so elegant. The art direction, I feel like, really mm-hmm. elevates the entire brand, right? Yes, it's like she takes the illustration out, put it here so people can enjoy it. Um, that you see that representation is so important here. And she, her and her team did such a good job um, over yes. here. Yes, oh my gosh, it's really, really gorgeous. I mm-hmm. love how like the illustrations are very they feel very organic i mean they're very clean because you could tell it's like illustrator but then the the um layout of the actual information is super um rigid and like tidy which is a really big contrast to the connected illustrations i think that contrast adds so much interest Mm -hmm. and she said that uh they do a lot of branding uh packaging in Montreal, there's a lot of artists, so they do a lot of like music poster, music cover as well, uh, really supporting their community, uh, really nice people. And she say like at her studio, they don't work on Friday. Nice. Um, how happy it is. And I think uh, on Friday, she does uh, pottery as well. So she was saying, well, on Friday, I'm going to let everyone uh, from my team do what they love to do and live happily. Yes, um, that's so amazing. It's so good to have that work-life balance. Yeah. Um, and keep yourself inspired too, right? Yeah. An extra day to recharge. Exactly. It's just easy to like have healthy lifestyle. The more healthier it is, the more um, you can think of the design. Your mind is fresh. Instead of working on the time, you know, your friend's dead. 
<laughs> I love that project. It was so beautiful. The so like beautiful. organic shapes and then the type just fits so So, nicely uh, together you know it's like mm -hmm. it's still friendly it's but it's still very elevated and the colors too are really really cool against yes. the juice colors too like you could tell that they thought about the color of the bottle and how it would work with the juice inside of it so mm -hmm. it's so just like satisfying satisfying the type is absolutely beautiful um there's another project i would love to show is the cafe oh Because I'm Cafe Vietnamese, so edge. this is what I drink. It's Vietnamese, yes. Yes, yes. it's Vietnamese coffee uh, shop. And I think it's so beautiful. It's, I can recognize it right away uh, in my culture. That this is the towel, uh, the kitchen towel that we all used to have. And she really take that inspiration and make it more elevated, make it more, um, you know, sophisticated. And yes. I love how it's one color. It's, it's so beautiful. Yes, yeah, so she took that history of the kitchen tile and just made it a really big part of the brand. I think that's so smart. And I love that the the icons, they're very crisp again, but then you have the texture. Mm -hmm. Like she, she really brought in texture into this project that we didn't see with the other two. But you yeah. can really like that really makes it feel a lot cozier and less yeah. cold, right? If this was flat, it would feel a little cold and the texture just brings like this homey element to it that yeah. I can really appreciate. That looks I think really you, cool. You get it right away when because it has a touch of modern look when it she put on this tie in one color because in my country they own different color. I thought she did a simple twist to make it so modern. It's so smart of her. Um, and you can tell right away it's like um, family owned because it's kitchen style. They start from the kitchen. Yes, I love it. It's a very well thought out brand strategy mm. and with a flawless execution. Let's take yeah. a look at one more. Which one? Yes, um, there's one project that she did uh, that I really like. The Catch. That's the one that I really like. Oh, but I also like this one, the 50 Years de... I can't say anything, you guys. Equam or something like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, which one? There's two that I really oh, yes. like. That one and on the which other one. one. This one's really interesting. Just a very different approach. Mm -hmm. I think it's an uh, ex exhibition um, education of you can. Yes, I saying. can't read any of this. I'm just gravitating to the to the icons and the imagery. It's so bright. Yeah, it's like 50 years uh, anniversary of you can. It's like a festival. It's, a it's beautiful, festival. and I feel like it's so tactile. Mm -hmm. And she does have this craft side of her is make it so wonderful. Um, she has like <coughs> computer, she yes. digital, I, and now she I goes... thought that it was it was like it's like a felt or something, a foam, and mm -hmm. you cut it to create these really cool shapes. And it really adds like such a different and interesting elements to the entire design. Like, look how cool to see that go from traditional to yes. digital. To digital. Ugh. It's so really, simple. really cool and goes to show cool. you can really incorporate anything into your design process if you want to. Yes, and they put it into the space as well. You have to think of it in a 3D form. It's not just flat. You have to brand yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Space. It's so it's so well thought out. And I love that um, even though, you know, this is cleaned up, like you can tell it's very clean lines. She still mm -hmm. kept the organic kind of um, outlines to give it a little bit of character, a little bit of style, like you mentioned mm -hmm. before. Exactly. Let's look at one last one. Okay. Yes, do it, do it, do it. Let's do it. This one. Oh, that one, that's see, the one that I would like to. <laughs> yes. Can I see what, like, what I'm doing? Like the illustration is so fun. It's so cookie. Like, it's the way so it is. so cool. It has so uh, much character. Yeah, because like in Montreal, they have a lot of this distillery. This, this, this distillery? Distillery? Distillery, yeah. They have a lot of beer and you know, it's a ton. So the market is very big. Um, so she does a really good job here with this illustration. It's amazing. I just love the combination. There's a lot of uh, copy happening, mm -hmm. but yes. it's still the, the illustration is still so big. It still like dominates the can. And mm -hmm. yet, you know, she created the space or the team created the space for yes. all of the copy and all the little details that make it feel really put together. Yes. Um, oh, my God. 
This so is beautiful. so aspirational. It's beautiful. And I can see what you mean. It's kind of like what you worked on, what we're working on today. Similar, mm -hmm. similar vibe. Yeah. So maybe a lighter uh, stroke. A lighter stroke. Uh, <laughs> kind of like a different style. Yes. Uh, but it's a rose. It's, with, it's so a rose cool. as it's walking. It's so a weird. rose walking. Yes. It's, it's again like, uh, you know, putting a little face on characters, bringing things to life. I just love everything about this the type, the illustration, how she married it together on the layout of the can. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for showing us their work, um, Danny. It's been amazing. Yeah, so follow Veronique Lafortune on Behance and follow her team. They're talented people and they look like supermodel. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. Now, before we move on, don't forget to submit your recommendations for creatives to highlight for our next Artist Spotlight. Just head over to the Artist Spotlight tab at the top of the chat and you can send your nominations. So if you're on YouTube and you're like, where is that button? Come over to Behance, behance.net slash Adobe Live. And at the top of the chat, you'll see the button that says Artist Spotlight and you can send your nominations to possibly get featured in our next Artist Spotlight. Okay, Danny. Okay. Let's get back to work. We have... This is the, the last stretch of this packaging design process. Let's do it. What are we going to do next? And one more thing I'm going to remind everyone in the chat. If you have questions, bring them to us in the chat on Behance. And we're happy to answer um, while we learn here from Danny. Mm -hmm. And now we are creating the Instagram graphic. It's where we left off. I'm so excited to see this. So we're going to finish up the Instagram uh, so that you can see where it go because um, depending on how much time we have, we have like poster next, but then I think if you can visual this Instagram, how I uh, explore it, you can visual how the poster going to look like. So yes, uh, it's good perfect. To we have time to work. Um, okay. So that looks so cool and i think the frame adds just a little bit of interest that makes it feel different exactly. and kind of makes the photography more a part of the brand mm -hmm. but it's still like fast and easy right because you want the brand to be able to easily kind of use these different templates um do you provide templates for the clients usually like okay here are some social media templates for your instagram or anything like that Yes, usually you gave the template for them and you, they can just replace the images. Um, nice. The more you do, the better because uh, they gonna keep it as brand as they can. And remember that when you uh, do this uh, social media, always pick on the element from the pack and bring it here so it's coherent. Um, you can yes. create something new thing, but don't go too far because sometimes you get carry on like you look back oh <laughs> too far from the brand <laughs> right yeah you can definitely get carried away and then lose sight of the of the brand guidelines that you originally set if you start experimenting too much oh this is really cool i love it now you yeah. have more space to drop in more information i think yeah. um that is a really smart move so what I kind of temp same. Sorry, what kind of templates do you usually recommend? Like, do you, what kind of different kinds do you do for your clients? So I say, but usually I give it in Illustrator. So um, if they want to modify this illustration, they can. Um, but when it's come, when it's come to something, just photo, maybe you can give it in uh, InDesign as well. So it's really up to you. Got it. Okay. Okay. And do you feel like you have to help your clients understand the template or do they usually have a designer that can work it for them? Uh, usually they have a designer that's going to uh, work for them. Perfect. So usually you hop in a call and explain, go through it so that they understand uh, what they would do um, to keep it on brand. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. the client could get carried away too and um it's good to go yeah. a little off-brand. So over here, let's say this is the product and uh, you have the flavor around so they know, oh, so like this shot is going to be uh, uh, um, one of the flavor and you have the ingredient that wrap around it so that they, 
they know. So they understand. Okay, mm-hmm. amazing, amazing. I love that you are giving us a little insight as to how you deal with the client once you know you're trying to help them have the best social media presence as possible. It can be very hard, but I love knowing that you're like you know you're doing the best you can to help them out and make sure the brand stays as great as you created it, right? Yeah. Um, so here I'm gonna put it back to the frame and since we have the frame sometimes you can like scale it up scale it down more space around it's so mm-hmm. much game that you can play around this it's just endless definitely and um, I'm so curious how many layers you're working in I see you have them labeled I'm just curious because with illustrator you can have like infinite amount of layers and they work different than photoshop layers so I'm curious how you're organizing your layers for this project when you have a chance and yes. you're done creating this. So um, usually when an illustrator, you try to avoid uh, less grouping layer at possible because it's going to make it crash or heavy. So avoid that because um, sometimes you work and sometimes it's in a group, in a group, in a group, in a group. And sometimes you do it by accident too. Like you don't even know. Mm, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. That's really smart, you guys. A little tip there. Keep the grouping simple and work with your layers. Yes. I feel like it's such a hard decision. Like, is this a layer? Is this a group? You know, dividing it. So I like to see how you're doing it here. That feels very like sensible. Yeah, because I usually have template at the bottom. Template mean this background that you want you don't want to move. So you can hit it lock. You don't move anything. Nice. And then you have art is where this graphic coming in. And then after that, you have type over here. So you have some type in one layer. Sometimes there's so many things in there. You don't want to move to lock the thing. You just move the type and lock. And then at the top, I have guide. So in, sometimes you want to align it. You have guide in one layer. So work is smart that way because at the end, you don't have to like dig it in like, oh my gosh, where is it? Which layer? Where is it? <laughs> hey, where is it? Or when you send it to your production guy, he will be a little happier. <laughs> Got <laughs> it. That is so smart. And so you will say in general, you always have those four layers? Yes, exactly. Usually I have these four layers. Sometimes I have a photography layer too, like food production photography yeah. okay. in one layer. Um, but it is depending on what you're comfortable with. But uh, that way you don't have to spend another hour to clean up everything before you send to your production. Yes, I which I have done before. So thank you so much for that organization tip. I feel like it's maybe underrated to keep your layers so tidy, but it is a game changer throughout your process. If you just get used to it, you're going to mm-hmm. feel like a boss, right? You have exactly. somebody wants something. I have it in the exact, I know exactly where it is that calms your mind and your process a lot so tell me what we're doing for this last instagram post so i um, just want to let's in case you guys are running out of uh, photography shooting let's say they only afford to shoot 10 photos what do we do so right. here we can yeah. like create it in a really graphic way as well uh, with the mock-up i mean this is not on a mock-up but let's say this is the mock-up um, you flip it out and make it graphic yeah, you have just another element to play with because you're right. That can definitely hold back some brands like limited photography or, yeah. you know, like the last few years, maybe it's been harder to get new photographs taken. This is a mm-hmm. really cool solution to kind of help the brand and um, think, get that problem solved before they even notice that it's an issue. Give exactly. them some extra things to work with. Extra things to work with. And, you know, they, I have that um, section divider on my packaging. Well, we can repeat it here. Exactly. So smart. It. Now, Danny, I'm giving you a little heads up. We have about nine more minutes left on the stream. Mm-hmm. All right. Perfect. Just so you know. <laughs> okay. So this is looking so good. I love that you're showing us everything from the questions that you ask the client all the way to the social media posts and templates you can create for them. And I have a question. Do you present it to them in this like green mock-up or do you present it in another way? Um, you mean like the green phone? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I usually do that. Um, just depending on the brand. This brand is like green is a color. So I just want to keep it on brand. 
Got um, it. Okay. That's why I keep it green. And then usually I don't use real mockup because phone update all the time. And then a year later, oh, I have to find a new one. So just yeah. make it like um, like <laughs> this and, and keep it all keep it the same for all your projects. And that's you can true. Just... Yeah, that way it's a little more universal. Exactly. Yep. Cool. Cool. And do you have somebody um, on your team or that you work with to do like the copy for the post, or do you usually just have the mock copy, the the Laura Mipsum? Um, I usually would design this uh, separately, and I have some space for Laura Mipsum, and then um, I can ask my uh, copywriter to come up with the amount of text that I want. So let's say yes. I, only want, I only want three words because without <laughs> it, you're like, oh my gosh, you can't with a lot. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I wanted copy, but not that much copy, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, sometimes you have to you have to be very specific. I need yes. five words, please. <laughs> yeah, it's because you already have it here. So I'm, you know, just as you know, I'm trying to fit it here. So thank you. Uh, so here <laughs> exactly. we are. Yeah. You know, it's better to ask for exactly what you want. Yes. <laughs> then leave room for error. Yes. Exactly. Always be, always be specific. Never assume because you have surprised the other you want to. Yes. Save yourself the headache. This mm-hmm. is looking so good. I feel yes. like this brand is ready to launch. Ready to go. Mm. Amazing. So let's say this is a uh, pack and then uh, you can have a color in the background. You can expand more of that farming illustration if you want. It's almost this pack is laying on an illustration wall. So that's going to be very fun too. Yes. And I see, like you mentioned, there's so much room for maybe animation too, right? Like I could see so much of this design be like mar- marquee animated mm-hmm. or have the, the actual characters come to life. Do you, do you do any of that kind of animation or do you tend to hand it to somebody else? Um, it depends because I, I do have the skill. So I usually would love to do them because I do have a vision for it. And if you don't, then it just ask the client if they have the budget to hire someone freelance um, to do it because it's really worth it. Because if you think of it, uh, when people scroll on Instagram, when things move, it's catch more attention than things more static. So it's really a trend these days doing animation for the brand. So don't be afraid to pitch the idea, suggest it to the client and see what they say. You don't know I, until you try it. <laughs> I agree. It could be really worth it for them. Um, how did you learn animation? Um, I had one class in a school and, you know, I fall in love with it and I just learned it on my own because it's, there's so much tutorial, free tutorial on YouTube that you can watch um, and learn it by your own because that that um, program is so large that there is no way you learn everything in class. So you, as long as you have, you love it, you can learn it. Yes, with a little bit of initiative. I think you're totally right. In all of the Adobe programs, there's so many ways to accomplish something that really it's up to you to find the way that works for you, learn what you want to learn and apply it. And sometimes that's taught in school. Sometimes that's going to be a YouTube video or sometimes it's going to be an Adobe live stream just like this. So I can't agree with you more. And I am obsessed with these little, is that going to be a little tree? It looks Um, like, or a little sun? a little ball that float around the farm just like it's imaginary farm we can do whatever we want exactly. i love it because the tagline is utopia right so it's beyond the imagination yes um, yes i totally agree yes. um danny when you have a chance tell us a little recap give us a little recap of everything that we did today because we've done so much and, you know, I want to have some time to go over everything that we learned in this stream for anyone who maybe missed any part. Yes. So today we did um, expand from two flavors to the rest of the flavor. And we're just having fun creating this face. I know some of it's not perfect, but you get the idea. And after that, we did design the top of the pack and it's worked beautifully. And then we did test the design into over here as well to see if it works or it doesn't work. Uh, so really important step before you present to the client, just double check because sometimes 
the whole range is you know blue and you pick blue and it doesn't work like oh my god you have to go back and yes i think this part was like so uh practical and informative for everyone on the stream like you can literally make a mock-up of your competitors and place your product right next to it so you can explain to the client why this design is the best why this is your recommendation and you can also maybe tweak anything if you notice that something's a little off or you look too much like a competitor this is your chance to kind of fix it mm -hmm. yes so this was really really handy mm -hmm. it's how to sell the design to like oh um and here we did do a full pack um Yes, the full, here. the full wrap. And then retelling the story on around and it's really how people and it's navigate, it's interacting with you, it's talking to you, it's fun, it's quirky. Um, and then I love did... this part. You added so many elements there too. <laughs> yes. And then I did some mock-up and I showed you guys how to hack it. And here we are. Um, it worked just fine. Um, we didn't have time for this, but I think you get the idea. Definitely. And then we look at some uh, photography or direction for the client so that you can include in your um, brand guideline. Um, and then we did some social media work. And from here, it's easy to expand into posters if you like, um, but on website as well. I know we didn't have time to go through this, but um, I'm going to post this uh, case study on Behance. It's going to be available on Adobe. Uh, live project so you can really have to see the final product um, if you're curious at the end. Danny, you covered so much. I feel like since yesterday to today, we have gone through the entire packaging design process. You've showed us all of your tips. You showed us how fast you work. I know so many people were impressed by your speed. And I just think that like you have so much knowledge about packaging design that you were able to share with us throughout the stream and you brought this brand to life in like such an unexpected way mm -hmm. i really appreciated everything throughout this process and honestly thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom and for showing us sweet simple i am so excited to i wish i could sweet smile i wish i could purchase this and i thank you for sharing this whole project with us Thank you to everyone who joined us throughout this stream. Um, make sure to follow Danny on Instagram and on Behance so you can catch this entire project when he posts it. Now, in the meantime, stay tuned for the Premiere Pro Challenge with Ryan Selvi right after this stream. Adobe Live will be back tomorrow with our evangelist for a full day of master classes, followed by a new episode of Office Hours with Nick Longo and Andrew Hockrattle. See you next time, friends. Thank you so much, Danny, for sharing everything with us. Thank you so much for everyone to be here. I was so happy and I hope you learned a lot from me. I'm sure they did. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you.